I'm Ryan from ExtremeTerrain.com and in this video we're going to talk about the different trim packages available for the 2018 JL. This is going to be helpful to you if you're looking to purchase a JL and you're not sure which trim package to go with, or maybe you're just curious about what's included in all of the different packages. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, that way you can check out some other videos about the JL and some other great Jeep content. But for now, let's jump into the sport. So like I said, there are going to be a total of four different trim packages. We have three of them with us today, and we're going to start on the low end. What we don't have today is the Sport. This is a Sport S, so it's a little bit of a step up from that. The Sport is going to be very, very basic, and if you're looking at a Sport, here's what you're going to get. You'll have the Command Track Transfer Case with 345 gears. It's going to come with 17-inch black steel wheels. Those are going to be an all-season tire on that Jeep. They're going to be 31 and a half by nine inches. On the inside of that Jeep, again, very, very bare bones. No power windows, no power locks, not a lot of options to upgrade a lot of the interior stuff. A couple of the options that are available, even on that basic sport, are going to be an anti-spin rear differential that's going to add a little bit of traction. And if you plan on doing a lot of off-roading, that's gonna be a good option to pick up. You can also get an all-terrain tire instead of an all-season tire. Again, a little bit more off-road ability there. You can get an engine block heater. That's gonna be for our friends who are up north in those really, really cold temperatures. You'll know about the engine block heaters and that is going to be a factory option for even the Sport. So a couple of the interior options that you actually can get on the Sport are that tow and trailer HD electrical group. And that's going to include a seven and a four pin trailer connection. So not that this is ever going to be a heavy duty tow vehicle, but if you are gonna be moving a trailer, that's great to have. It's also going to add a bigger battery and a bigger alternator. And the thing that a lot of you are gonna be looking at that package for is the auxiliary switches. So you can actually get some auxiliary switches that don't do anything from the factory, but they're already there and installed, making it very easy to hook up some additional lights, a winch, really any of that other stuff that you may wanna bolt onto your sport. You can also get the smokers package, which of course is going to have a cigarette lighter and an ashtray on the inside of the vehicle. And then a couple other little things like rubber floor mats, a Jeep brand recovery packages, tinted windows, those are going to be the sort of basic options that you can get with the Sport. But when you step up into the Sport S, you're going to have even more options available. So the Sport S is going to have a lot of those same standard features that we just talked about on the Sport with a couple of little differences, but it is going to have some additional option packages that you can get should you choose to add them. But first, let's talk about some of those standard features. Again, you're going to have halogen headlights. This is going to be the standard bumper on the Sport and the Sport S. These black fender flares, a 17 inch wheel with a 31 and a half by nine inch tire. Again, you can get the uh, all season tires or the all terrain tires. Now, that we're standing by the Sport S here. These are going to be the alloy wheels that come standard on this Jeep, but you can also step up to an optional polished alloy wheel should you choose to. As far as standard features, you're still gonna have that same 344 rear. You're gonna have the command track transfer case. This vehicle is going to come standard with power windows and power locks, and that is going to be a little bit different from what we saw on the Sport. The option packages that are available on the Sport S that are not available on the Sport, there are only a couple of them that really affect the outside of the vehicle. That is, you can get the dual top group, so that's gonna include both a soft top and a hard top right out of the factory, and you can get additional top options, so some different colors and some different materials, especially when it comes to that soft top. And then you can also get an optional set of side steps on the Sport S that are not even an option on the Sport. Now, the rest of the packages that are available for the Sport S are on the inside, so let's go in there and I'll show you then. So like I said, a lot of the differences between the Sport and the Sport S are going to happen on the interior. I already mentioned that the Sport S comes standard with power windows and power locks, but that's not even going to be an option for you on the Sport. One of the other differences you're gonna see is right here. So on the Sport, you're going to have to get an optional package in order to get Uconnect 3, and it's going to have a five inch screen. That is going to be standard on the Sport S with the optional seven inch screen, and that's what we have here. This is part of the technology group. So you get the seven inch screen, you're going to get automatic climate control with the air conditioning all worked through the screen here. You're also going to get additional air filtration and Apple CarPlay with that technology group. Another package that you can get on the Sport S is the convenience group. That's going to have the built-in universal garage door opener and also a remote start, but of course that's not available with the stick shift. Two other groups that are available on the Sport S are going to be the cold weather group. Of course, that's going to have heated front seats, heated steering wheel, and that's also 
going to have a remote start and you can also get the active safety group and that's going to have things like blind spot monitoring and cross traffic monitoring. It's also going to have the uh, little beep that happens as you're backing up that park sense, that park assist, so you're not gonna back your Jeep into anything. And it's going to include LED tail lights, which is not going to be an option anywhere else on the Sport S. You're going to have to get that active safety group to get the LED tail lights. Those are gonna be the big groups, but there are a few additional optional things you can get with this vehicle. You can get an upgraded sound system. That's going to be the Alpine system. Uh, in the back cargo area, there is a trail rail management system. That just keeps all of your gear in place when you're on the trail or even just running around on the street. As we talked about before, you can get rubber mats in the Sport S. And if you do get the hardtop with this Jeep, you can get a hardtop headliner system right out of the factory. So that pretty much covers all of the standard and optional features on both the Sport and the Sport S. So now we're gonna talk about the Sahara and this vehicle is gonna be a little bit more comfortable, have a few more creature comfort options, but also be a lot more aesthetically pleasing than the Sport or the Sport S. This is going to have some standard features that make it that way and also have some additional optional packages. So let's first talk about what's standard on this Jeep that isn't even an option on the Sport S. Starting down at the wheel and tire package, this is going to have an 18 inch alloy wheel and a slightly larger 31 by 10 inch tire. And this is going to have a body color fender flare standard as opposed to the black one on the Sport or the Sport S. A few other differences are right up front here. You're going to have a surround around the headlight, a surround around each one of these grill cutouts as well as a grill insert here. And on the bumper, they carry that same detail around the fog light inserts there as well. So as I was saying before, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, a few more of those little accent trim pieces that make this a step up over the Sport S. So there are going to be some optional packages available on the Sahara that weren't available on the Sport S. Everything you could get on the Sport S you can get on this, but you can also get some additional stuff here. One of those additional packages is going to be the LED lighting group, and we have that on our Sahara. So the LED headlights, fog lights, and tail lights, which are going to give the vehicle a much more modern look, but also be a lot more effective at lighting up the road in front of you, is going to be an optional package that you can pick up on the Sahara. As with the Sport S, you can get a polished wheel. That's gonna be a little bit of a more expensive option. You can get that on the Sahara as well. Now all the other optional packages are things that I can show you on the inside of the Jeep. So let's pop in there. The first thing you're gonna notice about this Sahara is that it has a lot more leather on the inside and that is going to be an optional package that's available on the Sahara that wasn't even available to you on the Sport or the Sport S. So you're going to have a little bit of a nicer leather wrapped steering wheel, of course, leather seats. Even the dash is a little bit different with some more leather and some more stitching. So speaking of the dashboard, another option that you can get on this vehicle that we actually have here that you couldn't get on the Sport and Sport S is this electronic infotainment system that makes this screen an 8 4 inch screen instead of a 7 inch screen. It's going to add navigation, HD radio, and it actually also adds a premium sound system. That was an option on the Sport S, but it's going to come as part of that electronic infotainment group on this vehicle. You can also add the remote start as an a la carte option when you step up to the Sahara, as well as a proximity keyless entry. That allows you to keep the key in your pocket and come up to the vehicle, just grab the handle and have it unlock. Again, that was not an option on the lower trim package Jeeps. Sticking with the theme of the Sahara having a few more creature comforts, like all the options that we just talked about, this is going to have a slightly different transfer case as an option. And this is going to be the Select Track transfer case. And what that does is add one additional mode where this is actually an automatic four wheel drive system. So in the other vehicles, you select two high, four high or four low. This has an automatic setting so that you can pop it in there. It'll drive around just like it normally would in two wheel drive until it notices slipping and then pop into four wheel drive. So that is going to be an upgraded option on this vehicle that you couldn't get on the others. So that's pretty much gonna wrap up the Sahara. Let's move on to the Rubicon. So now we're here talking about the Rubicon and this is the highest trim package. This is going to be one of the more expensive JLs that you can get. And this is really more off-road themed. So the Sahara had a lot of creature comforts built into it and a lot of options that made it even more comfortable and more stylish. 
And the Rubicon is going to have all of those same options that you can get, but this is going to have a lot of standard stuff that makes it a lot more off-roadable. So one of the things that you're gonna notice right off the bat is this steps down to a 17 inch wheel instead of the 18 that was on the Sahara, but it steps up in tire size to a 33 inch tire. And that's gonna give you a little bit more traction off-road, a little bit more comfortable ride off-road. And this is going to be more of an all-terrain tire as well. In order to make room for those bigger tires, this has a slightly higher fender flare. So the flare is actually moved up, giving you more room for articulation. Speaking of articulation and suspension travel, this, like Rubicons of the past, is going to have a sway bar with an electronic disconnect built right into it, and that is a standard feature on this Jeep. From the push of a button, you can disconnect the sway bar, giving you maximum traction and articulation when you are off-road. A couple of things that you can't see underneath this Jeep are going to be the Dana 44 front and rear axles. Those are going to be locking axles, and they do come with 410 gears instead of the 345s that are in the other options that we talked about. This has a little bit more armor on it as well. This comes standard with a set of steel rock rails, offering a little bit of protection when you are off-road. A few of the things on the Rubicon are there to make it look a little bit different from some of the other trim packages that we talked about. Most notably, you're going to see the big Rubicon sticker on the side of the hood here. You have a lot of red accents, most notably the red tow hooks up on the front of the Jeep. A lot of those red accents also carry onto the inside of the Jeep that we'll show you in just a second. This is also going to have that Rubicon hood. That's something Jeep has carried since the 10th anniversary Rubicons, having a different hood. This one has a little bit of a bulge and this big vent right here that definitely makes it different and lets everybody know from a long way off that they're looking at a Rubicon and not one of those other trim packages. So that's a lot of standard stuff, but there are also gonna be a couple of options available on the Rubicon as well. You can get this same wheel in black if you choose to. You can get a set of steel bumpers. That's gonna be both front and rear steel bumpers. The front one is going to be winch ready, which allows you to bolt the winch right up to it without any additional hardware or without swapping that bumper to an aftermarket one, which is a really nice feature. And finally, you can get body colored fender flares if you choose to, which actually makes it look a little bit more like a Sahara while still having all of the off-road ability of the Rubicon. So like I said, there are also some changes on the inside. So let's pop in there and I'll show you those. So like I already said, a lot of the options you can get on the Sahara, you can get on the Rubicon. That includes the leather seats. We didn't get that on this Jeep, but these seats still have the Rubicon badging on them, which is a nice little touch. As I said, from the outside, a lot of those red accents that we saw, they do get pulled to the inside. So we have some red stitching on the inside of the steering wheel here. The stitching and the Rubicon on the seats is red as well. But the biggest thing that stands out is the red dash. And this is not an option. This is standard on the Rubicon. So regardless Regardless of the exterior color that you get, it's going to be red on the inside. That's something that not everybody's crazy about, but it does certainly let you know that you're driving a Rubicon. As we said from the outside, this does have the disconnectable sway bar and lockers. Those buttons have been moved a little bit from some past generations, but they're going to be right here and they're not going to be on any of those other trim packages. And one of the other big things that's on this vehicle that's actually a standard feature on the Rubicon is the Rock Track transfer case. It's only going to be too high, four high, and four low like you're used to, but it does have a different gear ratio in it. And what that does with the eight-speed automatic on this Jeep is offer an 84 to one crawl ratio, which is absolutely ridiculous. This thing is going to be amazing off-road. It gives you a ton of torque, keeps you exactly where you wanna be in the power band while keeping you going very, very slow so you can climb over obstacles. So that Rock Track transfer case, the Dana 44s with the 410 gears and lockers, the electronic sway bar disconnects, all of that stuff is what really makes a Rubicon a Rubicon. It's going to drive up the cost of this trim package, but if you do wanna go off-roading right off the showroom floor, this is going to give you the most capability. So those are the four different trim packages that you can get on a new JL and a lot of the options that you can get with each of those. We talked about the Sport and the Sport S. They're gonna be the least expensive, but also the most basic options. The Sahara, that's going to give you a little bit more aesthetically and also a little bit more comfort. And finally, that Rubicon, that's going to be the top of the pile. It's going to give you the comfort, the looks, and the off-road ability right out of the box. Of course, 
At the end of the day, they're all Jeeps. They're all going to be great on-road and off-road. Which one you choose is completely up to you. So comment below and let me know which is your favorite trim package, which one you have, what you're driving, what's on order, and why you like it or don't. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can check out our compare videos of past generations and the new JL and some of the best Jeep content out there.